it's time to take on the final big push for this API cleanup pass. When I'm done today, there will be some API lit work left on the table for the future, but I want to address all of the rest of the big concerns I have before I start building anything on top of this structure. The first issue I have in mind here is this begin end pair system that I have, and it appears in several layers. In order to get started, I need to absorb these functions for a little while. I need a picture of which begin and end pairs exist in my graphic system, what each one of them does, how they're similar to each other, how they sort of depend on each other and wrap each other, which users use them and which implementers implement them and what purposes they serve and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm just going to sit and read and contemplate for a little while. It turns out it's a little difficult to completely summarize what these pieces do into words here. What's complicated about this is that what it actually solves is quite simple, but there are a lot of different sort of faces to this system. Different users or programmers or user slash programmers come together and cooperate here. And it's not just the designer. In fact, there's four separate faces that I think I need to pick apart here to really make sense of it. First, one of the faces implements the OpenGL layer, and this one plays the simplest role, but this is sort of requiring this in the first place. This is the layer from which OpenGL's own constraints require me to begin and end because OpenGL needs to bind a particular window and OpenGL context into the th thread's context before I can start using that thread to do any work. Another face implements the render layer on top of that OpenGL layer. The person writing this doesn't have a very hard job either, but they are bound on every side by the design decisions I make. So the design decisions I make on the OpenGL side affect them. The design decisions I make on the render interface affects them. And anytime I have a poor design or just a mismatch in concept between these layers, this user ends up having to do some nasty hack to get around it, and then users of this layer end up having to route their intentions through the, the extra layer that is sort of introduced here. And the reason this layer exists is good, but for this particular problem, we kind of don't want this person who is implementing the render layer on top of the OpenGL layer to be adding much. And so that's one of the problems I need to watch out for. A third face to this problem is the user who wants to use the render layer mixed with the concrete graphics API underneath. And this is the user who ends up having to do hacks to send their intentions and route them through the intermediate layer uh, and gets a little bit nasty and hacky if I don't design that to be quite the right way for the for this particular user. So it's from this perspective that I have to remember this use case. If I forget about this use case, that's where I start losing the ability to use it in this flexible way in the future and having to hack around the mistakes. And finally, the fourth phase to the system is the user who wants to target the render layer as if it's a completely abstract layer so that they can port more easily, so they don't want to deal with the underlying concrete uh, graphics API. Because of this user, I can't just have my users always blend both ways. So the render layer does in fact have to completely wrap the underlying begin end pair somehow. I can't say, hey, you go to the underlying API, hit the begin, and then everything else you do can be in the render layer. That doesn't work because now I've still forced you to go and tie your code directly to a layer that is not portable. So this is not a particularly complex user either, but again, they have just one extra constraint they add to the table, which is that because of this user, I need to completely wrap the underlying API with the render layer. In the end, getting this right was mostly about trying out tweaks and sitting with them for a little while to see how I feel from each of these perspectives. Luckily, I do think I got there in the end. 
The final API still has begin end pairs, both in the OpenGL layer and in the render layer. But the ones in the render layer are just bare wrappers so that the portability use case here can work, right? They don't do anything else except to call in. In fact, I put the word backend into the functions in the render layer to signify that all they are doing is telling the backend to begin and telling the backend to end. The other work that the render layer wants to do that was previously coupled to these begin end pairs has been renamed with this idea of a canvas. And so when you begin rendering, one of the first things you're likely to do is to set up a canvas. And when you're done rendering before you've closed everything out, one of the things you're likely to do is send the canvas to a window. You're not actually going to be required to do these things. So I no longer need special begin ends for when I am and am not rendering. But if you are rendering to a window, this is probably the pattern you would use. This decoupling does increase the user's boilerplate in the common case a little bit. They now have to call two functions to render to a window and two functions to end rendering to a window when I could have wrapped those up into one. But the extra flexibility I get satisfies all of the faces, actual hard requirements. And the downside here is just a little bit of extra boilerplate in a common case. They can always be joined together by another wrapper function if I really think that that makes a big difference. While I'm taking care of the big issues, another thing I want to fix is that users have to carry around a font data structure and a font texture handle in order to specify which font they want to use whenever they're trying to use the API that's supposed to be for high level string drawing. This is a super tedious and error prone thing to ask a user to manage, and so I want to try to clean that up. Now that my user face in my render layer is allowed to depend on font data types, I can actually clean this up by just moving the baking and texture building path into that layer and bundling them up into a single type, which means that now they'll be able to have a single handle in all of the API. Well, it looks like that all went pretty smoothly. With that, I think I've done as much API cleanup as I can fit in. This arc is overdue for a conclusion at this point. So even though I wanted to do more, I wanted to spend some time on performance, maybe get a chance to work out a couple of other little issues, smaller API things I didn't get to today. 
I think in the interest of wrapping things up and moving on, this is going to be the end. The only thing I will do is skip to the end and then one more video to do all the reflections on the entirety of the last three graphics arcs. So I'll see you then. Thank you.